Our guest on Sports Radio 92.9 The Game. Patrick, how good does it feel? You're back. It's football time. This has been a long time coming. Been eight months now. Glad to be back out here with all the guys. Talk about the end of last year. You get an opportunity to go to the Pro Bowl. And I know the Pro Bowl for fans has sort of lost some of the luster. But as a player, to get that opportunity to go to Hawaii and be surrounded by some of the greats, did you have to pinch yourself a little bit and look around and go, wow, I, I've kind of made it here in the National Football League? Man, I felt like a little kid. Because some, some of those guys, I mean, have been playing since I was in high school. So I was out there with Adrian Peterson, some of these guys. I'm like, wow. I remember playing with this guy on Madden, and now I'm out here with him, playing with him. So it was an awesome experience. And you had the two-touchdown game against the Indianapolis Colts. Um, I, I got a couple questions for you here on this Pro Bowl thing. You know, your, your stats, and, and for a fullback, it, it's not all about the stats. It's about, it's about functionality of the offense. But I want you to explain that. You caught 13 balls for 110 yards and two touchdowns. You ran the ball one time last year. Just tell people how a fullback with numbers like that gets to the Pro Bowl. A lot of hard work, day in, day out, punching the clock, going in there and just uh, digging out holes for guys like Devontae and Tevin and Teron. I mean, I couldn't have done it without the line in front of me or the backs behind me. So a lot of credit to those guys, and let's have another good one this year. Were there – I mean, obviously the moments with the touchdowns are great. You get the glory. You're in the end zone. You get mobbed by your team. But give us a couple of of awesome blocks that you had or, or awesome plays that maybe kind of, you know, didn't uh, impact the box score – that, that certainly wowed coaches and maybe got the league talking about Patrick DeMarco? Yeah, well, you know, early on we were really effective on the goal line. And um, a few big plays, I remember against Dallas, uh, we ran, I think it was second and goal from the one, and we ran like an outside zone week. And I had a linebacker and just put him on his butt. And uh, Devontae and went and walked in. And that was just kind of to set the tone. That was the first touchdown of the game we had. And uh, just, you know, picking up blitzes. Uh, I'd fill in, play some third down back towards the end of the season. And uh, – you know, just sitting there and filling the A-gap against a big backer and just stuffing him right there. and Just, uh, you know, the little things. Fullback, it's not, it's not catches for 40 yards, 30 yards. It's a catch for six, seven. Make it open up some holes, uh, scoring some touchdowns, uh, allowing Devontae to have 100-yard games. That kind of stuff is what really gets me going. Falcons fullback Patrick DeMarco, I guess, on Sports Radio 92.9 The Game. I've heard, and I've never hit somebody this way, I've heard that a, a perfect block is like hitting a golf ball perfectly where you don't feel anything, but the guy that you hit absolutely feels that. Is that kind of what you could describe from that Dallas game, knocking the crap out of one of the Cowboys? Yeah, it's just, you know, when you, when you can get your feet in the ground and get your shoulder and get your head in the right placement and then just, you know, deliver that blow. It is. I mean, I'm a golfer too, so it's like when you just kind of just tee off on one and just, it's just smooth. It's not too forceful. It's nothing against you, against them. It's just... You know, perfect collision, pop them and run your feet. Do you, do you ever have a moment? And fullback is probably one of the most unselfish positions in all of football. You're in the backfield, but you're not getting the ball. Your glory is making sure somebody else can do something good, whether it's Matt or Devontae. You have to be unselfish. What goes into that, getting ready to play fullback, knowing that 70 plays, you're going to have to take on somebody and collide with them? I think it's just a mentality. It's, it's an attitude. And, uh, you know, it's, you know, you got to strap on the pads on Sunday and say, hey, let's go. You know, I'm going to get my bell rung a few times. I'm going to rung, rung someone's bell a few times. So it's just about strapping them on, doing it, play in, play out. we got a pro bowler with us, y'all. Patrick DeMarco, fullback for our Falcons, one of the top fullbacks in the National Football League. 6'1", 240, uh, played his college ball at South Carolina. Um, I want to go back into your uh, – I joked with you before we were coming on the air, you're going to tell your life story. I actually wasn't kidding. Um, <laughs> so in 2011, you're on San Diego's practice squad. 2012, you're on Kansas City. Uh, then the last three years, now going into your fourth year here with the Atlanta Falcons. Talk about that journey, man, from, from didn't work out in San Diego, didn't work out in KC. It is very much working out here in Atlanta, and now you're decorated as a pro bowler. Talk about the, the rungs up the ladder, man. Yeah, it's been a journey, uh, one that I wouldn't change at all because I think it's kind of developed me into who I am. I've gone through some stuff. I've been cut three times, and, you know, it's just about plugging back and getting back in it. My first year, uh, I was undrafted uh, – lockout year in 2011 so it's kind of up in the air it wasn't until june when i got my call and i'm like sitting there like all right when's this gonna happen when's my dream and then actually the fourth day of training came, i broke my foot mm. went six months didn't hear anything was just kind of like it's over before it started but yeah, i stayed in shape my agent was persistent we uh ended up in kansas city for a year uh you know the team didn't didn't end up playing that well so roster got cleared and i cut the short end ended up here in atlanta and kind of in atlanta they had brady ewing here so i kind of had to take backseat to him for a few games and then filled in. So it was uh, 
it was a journey, but, you know, like I said, it, it molded me into who I am and kind of my work ethic and everything I have. Hard Knocks does a really good job showing us inside the locker room, stuff that we're not privy to. And sort of the dramatic ending is always guys getting cut, which is sad for us as fans because we get to know you and love you guys. As a player, you've had to go through that. What's that moment like when you get the phone call and you go, man, my job just went out the window? It sucks. Uh, you know, it's, you work so hard for, the, for this one opportunity, and that's why when you're out here during training camp, you can't take any play for granted. You've got to grind out every play because every play matters. Uh, you only get a certain few, and whether it's your, whether three games, four games. When you're in preseason, you're putting on tape. You're interviewing for 31 other teams. So, you know, it's, it's just about every chance you get going out there and just balling out. A year ago, Colin Mooney's in here, and you two have a really spirited competition. And Dan Quinn's preached that from the second he got here. Did you feel a little bit of pressure knowing that you had a guy that was pushing you every step of the way? Heck, yeah, I did. It was, uh, you know, we, we were neck and neck, and Colin was, uh, was a great dude, just worked his tail off. And he kind of, you know, he pushed me, I pushed him. It was kind of uh, like a battle between the two of us, and we just uh, we went at it. And, uh, you know, I respect the heck out of him. He's, he made me a better player, a better person, and uh, I hope I did too. we got a great guy playing fullback for our Atlanta Falcons, Patrick DeMarco. I want to talk about the other side of the ball for a minute. Um, there's been some buzz in camp, a lot of buzz about the speed on defense, uh, but specifically about Devondre Campbell, the fourth-round pick. Have you matched up with him? What have you seen from Devondre? Uh, would you also use the word freak to describe him? He's a big, lanky dude who can run. They're hard to come by. You don't see those guys very often. He's, he's talented. He has great instincts. Um, you know, he, he's a rookie, so he needs the reps. So the more, more we can get, I can get my pads on him in practice, the better. I can teach him. He can teach me, kind of work together. That's what we're out here competing for every day. We're not taking it easy on each other. We're out here grinding. So it's, uh, you know, we're going to be battling every day. But I'm excited to see him and all the other guys. We got... Man, that defense is flying around. It's going to be hard for us to kind of make those plays we did last year. Well, name a couple other guys that are, that are flashing some numbers that you're seeing. Uh, is, it, is it Deion Jones? Is it Neal? Is it Brooks Reed? Who, who are some other defensive guys who are flashing and making plays? You know, like, like Paul got better. I mean, Paul took a huge step in his leadership role and everything. And, um, I mean, the young guys like Deion Jones and, and uh, Philip Wheeler, these guys are, like, really showing flashes. So we're, we're going to have a really tight – Nick group of the linebacker, and they're going to be competing. So I better strap up and be ready to go because nice. they're going to be bringing it. Patrick DeMarco, our guest on Sports Radio 92.9 The Game. Uh, we try to keep it real, Rick and I do, and we love everything that goes on here at Flowery Branch. But last year the offense in the second half of the year struggled. Turning the football over, not moving the ball. Has stuff been worked on in the offseason? I know you can't give us specifics, but what was the motto, what was really talked about that you guys had to get better at to be a better unit this year? You know, we were good. You know, we, we slipped up in a few places, turning the ball over in the red zone, sometimes not scoring in the red zone. But overall, we were, we were a pretty good offense, and we felt confident in that. And just little tweaks here and there. And that's what we got to do. Just, you know, instead of doing this, don't do this. And just little small stuff. Just clean it up. Because when, when we're rolling, we're good. Mm-hmm. But it's just when we get out of being us. That was kind of some of the stuff last year. We, we got out of running the ball and making teams respect the run. We got into passing situations. And then it's a free-for-all in the passing game. So... We just got to stick to us, do us, and just go out there and do what we do. Running game was really solid a year ago. Devontae Freeman burst onto the scene really out of – not as a relative unknown if you're a college football fan, but not a lot of people in the NFL knew that he was capable of that. Now him and Tevin Coleman, competition. We, I know Dan talks about it a lot. What's it like blocking for each one of them? What's the difference do you have to do blocking for Devontae or Tevin? We've done a great job of kind of just being one group, and, and Coach Turner's kind of laid that law down, hey, we're one. Whether I'm blocking for Tevin, Devontae, you know, whether Will's back there playing tailback or I'm playing tailback, we, we're going to feel off each other. We're going to read off each other. So we're trying to be one group, see everything in the same eyes, and just uh, go out there. So it's, so we're not changing anything. You get to changing stuff, and that's when it gets complicated. Just stick to one and roll with it. Patrick DeMarco joining us. Uh, we were working, but I heard uh, that Matt threw a couple of touchdown passes today, one to Tevin Coleman, one to Devontae Freeman. There's been a lot of, of – articles and speculation that you know we know Devontae caught 70 plus last year but there's also been word on the street that Tevin Coleman's going to be more involved in the passing game this year how much more of a thrust and and focus um is it even more than last year or is it the same as last year in terms of involving the running backs in that passing game definitely try to get them more involved I mean they're both so dangerous you can get the ball in their hands and shoot you better hold your breath because they can take it 60 70 80 if they need to and Tevin's got that long speed people didn't get to see it truly last year but 
That dude can fly. When when he's uh, uh, walking through the uh, you know the halls and stuff, do you just you like bat at his arm just to make sure he's like he's <laughs> like holding the ball? You just like knock the ball. You like come up underneath Patrick and try to punch that thing out. Oh, to- he, he's got that fixed. He, he's got it down. He's uh you know he. He worked his butt off this offseason. You can really, you can truly see it during OTAs and training camp. Guys look at him like, dang, what'd you do? He's, you know, he's been in the system for two years now. Right. So he knows the offense. Last year, he's a rookie. You know, you're trying to find your way, and he found his way. He's, he's, he's ready to go. Well, awesome. Patrick, Patrick, I know you got to get inside, get some hydration, get some food, and, and get ready for training camp tomorrow. Pads tomorrow. Yes, sir. Can't wait for that. Patrick DeMarco, thanks for stopping by yeah. here on the Midday Show. Patrick, you the man. Thanks, thanks man. Thank you so much. Anytime.